This episode of the Bayou Dragons podcast is proudly brought to you by Dragon Industrial Rap. Fuse. Ready for any project, no matter how big or how small. Dragon Industrial Rap. All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Bayou Dragons podcast. We are live this morning here at Texas Trophy Hunters Extravaganza. Um, it's me and Mitchell here this morning, bright and early. It's about 9 o'clock. Um, had a good old time last night. Got to watch a little uh, little boxing bout. Uh, made our way around Houston. But uh, we're excited to be here uh, with you guys this morning. And alongside me, I've got Rocky and I've got George with Bluebird Waterfowl. And they have an exciting new product that we were, you know, just kind of fortunate enough to bump into them here at this show and, and check it out. And so I was like, we got to get you guys on the pod. We got to talk about, you know, whatever it is you guys have going on. Let you guys get have, you on the pod. Yeah, yeah. You guys got to get on the pod, man. So, um Mitchell joined me up here yesterday evening. It's been a it's been a pretty fun show so far, and you know, happy to be here and, and be able to meet cool guys like yourself, man. So well, introduce yourself, George, and uh, you know, tell us what you got going on, man. Yeah, um, well, I'm George Parker, um, really a nobody that loves to waterfowl hunt, and uh, had this crazy idea. So I guess that's why we're all here, right? Um, from Michigan originally. Moved out to California in 94 and um, San Diego in 2007 and then back up to Northern California in 2016 where I met my beautiful wife, two kids, and uh, yeah, that's how it all, that's how, that's how we got here. So you, we'll we'll come back to you. Rocky, let's uh, let's meet you, man. How are you doing this morning? Oh man, can't complain. Happy to be here. Super excited to be on the pod. Uh, (laughs) Texas born and raised, <laughs> United States military, took me to Mississippi, settled roots in uh, Arkansas in 2003, beautiful wife, three amazing boys, joined uh, Bluebird Waterfowl, uh, I guess uh, late summer, early fall last year, been uh, rocking with George ever since. And you've been hunting waterfowl for how long? Man, I think I've been hunting waterfowl somewhere around 12, 15 years. 12, 15 years, yeah. Yep. I would say, you know... For myself, like, I wasn't, we weren't like a big duck hunt family, like, starting out, you know. That was something that me and Mitchell, Mitchell actually got me in on duck hunt. Hey, what are you doing down there, Mitchell? You're awful quiet this morning. <laughs> I'm just listening to the music, man. Yeah, man. Um, well, yeah, that's that's good, man. We're, we're glad to have you guys, and um, let's just rip and run right into it, dude. I've been talking about this product that you guys have uh, to Mitchell because we've we've spoke, you know, the last two days at the show. Uh, give us the rundown, man. Tell us what you guys um, – are selling what you guys have have brought to the waterfowl industry. You know, I mean, I, it's 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 difficult for me because what I feel we've stumbled upon is probably the biggest innovation in waterfowl hunting since the spinning wing decoy. And I don't say that lightly because the spinning wing decoy changed everything, right? I mean, I haven't been hunting long enough to know what it was like when the spinning wing decoy came out, but I know how effective it is in my spread. Everyone uses them. Yep. Right. 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 And, um, you know, there was this hunt that we were on where it was just sheet glass and, uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of birds to look at either. I think we had, um, you know, one good flight of pintail early in the morning or something like that. And, um, you know, looking at these spinning wing decoys sitting over our, our spread, and it's all sheet glass, I'm going, dude, we got these lithium batteries shaped like a duck sitting over the water, and they're not doing anything for our spread. You spinning know? their little hearts out, and the water's just <laughs> stagnant, <laughs> completely right. stagnant. Right. And, you know, you got the guys who... You got the guys who tilt the duck into the water and, and they let, wing they the, let water, the wing yeah, hit right. the water. You got guys that put zip ties on the wings and they do all this stuff. So, you know, um, I knew that there were some options for us to figure things out. We had been eating Chinese food that day mm. uh, with my buddy David Chan. His family owns a, a Chinese restaurant. So uh, we had the corrugated wings. We took some chopsticks and we went out there and we stuck them in the ends of the wings. And I'm out there moving the rod up and down and trying to figure out, like, uh, exactly how much water I could move without, you know, stopping the duck completely. And um, it was a shit show, you know. I mean, I don't, y'all speak French here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one, of those days, one of those days you're 
just there's just nothing happening. You're just trying you throw everything you got at it and trying to figure out how we can change like it's just no motion, no whatsoever. I mean that's exactly right. And we were we were four hours north of where I live. So we had a long, lonely drive home where we were just brainstorming, dude. Probably what, no birds. What can we do, you know? Oh uh, we I went home with a pin. <laughs> I went home with a pin. I had to walk Oh God. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Um <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't our best day of waterfowl hunting. We all have them. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, you know, uh, we were on our way home, and we were just brainstorming stuff, and we're like, you know what? What if we did, like, a camshaft on on the motor? You know, what would that look like? And we got really excited about this idea. You know, I studied engineering and math in college, and I'm just like, oh. oh you're the yeah. right man for that, you're job. You know what I mean? Like, yep. oh, dude, I was like, there's something to this. So I got home, and I got my little field flasher lucky duck. I don't know if y'all have one of them, um, but it's a, a du- four AA battery bird, and uh, I took one of our chopsticks and a paper clip, and on the outside of that Lucky Duck thimble, I put a little piece of uh, chopstick and taped it on, so now we've got like this little mini camshaft looking thing, right? And um, I took one of my kid's darts, you know, the plastic darts with the suction cup on the end, and I stuck it onto the chopstick. And uh, I put it in this little bowl of water, and I hit, the bu- <laughs> I hit the button, and the water just went flying everywhere. Yeah, I'm like, okay, you know, we're, we're, on, to we're, some- we're on to something here, right? <laughs> off and running. So, you know, my wife's like, what the hell did you do? <laughs> There's water everywhere. Um, so I go back, and I uh, uh, get, a, uh, you know, like a Kool-Aid pitcher. And I put a little water in the bottom, and I set the thing up again, and I hit the button, and it's just throwing water up the sides. It's throwing water out of the pitcher. Um, we, we've really got something here. This thing's moving water. And long story short, 3D printers, I learned how to use a 3D software on YouTube. After a few weeks, I figured out how to create a simple prototype. And we got the 3D printers running, and we're just pumping out prototypes, and they all suck. I mean, I, could, I should, probably should have brought some here for you. <laughs> but they, they look like everything from something you found in a gutter in a big city to something that uh, would come in a Tinker Toy box, right? Like, they, it, this, this has evolved into what is now a perfect, perfectly balanced machine. It connects to the duck right on the motor. The wing goes in the outside. There's a camshaft in between the body and the wing, and it drops down a, a, a hollow carbon fiber rod, which, by the way, used to be a wooden stick right. when we were testing it. And... Um, the plate slides up and down the rod. Took us forever to figure out what we we're going to do with the plate. But essentially, it's a rod, a cam, a plate. It hits the water, and it moves water. And, and now we've got something here. We're, we're moving water with a spinning wing decoy. And, uh, and that was so exciting to see an idea come to fruition, but we weren't quite there yet, you know? Um, what this turned into... I mean, let's just get to that. I mean, later, this this has turned into probably the most intuitive waterfowl device that's been invented since the spinning wing decoy. Well, I am, and I was telling Mitchell about this last night. I mentioned this to you as well. I've, you and I have talked about this for three days now, and you know, I've run out of responses to tell you whenever <laughs> you're talking about this product, and I'm like, man, the, the next thing to do is just to go out there and see it in action you know and so the exciting thing is going to be when we come back and we're listening to this episode and we're able to put these words over the proof out in the field right and have the footage and be able to see that stuff and i'm excited to see it happen man i think it's going to be really cool um and that's why we have rocky here with us this morning man so let's go let's go over to that man so you've hunted over um a lot of days in the field with the animator and, and implementing it into your spread man what do you think this is bringing to, you know, how do you think this is changing the game? What's it bringing to the table for you, you know, that, that really is outside of the realm of possibility for what, you know, prior to having it? Right, man. You know, like, like George was saying, how many hunts have we sat there and you're, you're looking at sheet glass? I mean, countless days, right? So uh, got the animator in last September. Super excited to use it. Um, November came in North Dakota with the animator, first time using it. Incredible, incredible. Zero wind wasn't a problem for us. 
we had ripples on the water. More importantly, we had sound in our spread. You're not seeing sound in any hunter spread if you're not using the animator. Um, That's an important point. Yeah, yeah. I That's mean, a really important. Can we dig into that for just a second? Yeah. Sound crazy. And <laughs> you said uh, so. Something that um, that George was telling me about yesterday, Mitchell, was that they'll have guys just pounding like seven of these things at a time. Right. And that like, I'm I'm gonna I want to see that. I want to hear that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like th- these things sound so crazy, and it's like it's like he said. That's what you hear if you if you come up on birds and you're scouting out in the field and you're close enough to where you're within earshot. You know that's what you hear out on the water, and um, they, water sound. They just sound so good, you know. Right. And that's not something that you would immediately think of, you know, and even get the full effect of like watching a video of it or checking this product out and saying like, oh, that's good. Dude, when you hear this thing in person, it sounds freaking awesome. You can't you can't listen to it. You can't listen to it on a cell phone. You can't listen to it on a video. There's been one dude, Eric Hale, in, in East Virginia for Red Rising TV that had some really good equipment. He had cameras out there shooting, and he got some good video of the sound. But more importantly, a story that came from Eric Hale is he attributed the sound totally to his hunt. He was hunting public land wood ducks on a creek, and he said that he had a dozen wood ducks swimming upstream, coming to his decoy spread, and he told his camera guys, said, don't shoot them. It's like... Just let, let everything happen. Let's see what these things do. Let's see how these birds react to this sound. Because <clears throat> when you hear it, it's loud, right? I mean, when you hear it, it's, it's da, 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 right? It's, it's going. And so Eric's like, dude, let's see what happens. And these 12 wood duck swam through their spread, past their floaters, and encircled the animator, and were just staring at it. And this is, this, I think this is a, a really important segue to take here to talk about this sound. Our product plate that I was talking about earlier has 14 air chambers, 7 spit spots, so it actually captures the air in the water, mixes it together, cavitates the water, and it creates a sound of feathers in the water. I think, like you said, we've all been out there, Matt, right? We've all been out there walking out, and uh, you spook a coot or a widgeon or something in, in the dark, and da, 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 you hear yeah. it scoot across the water. That's what this sound does. And once we found out that this was working, guys were telling us that birds are trying to land on it. And I'm like, okay, you know, like I'm the guy who created it. You're trying to be nice, you know, whatever. <clears throat> no, the George, they're trying to land on it. We heard that from Alaska first. Then we heard it from Southeast Texas. Then we heard it from Virginia, Arkansas. Then the dude came in from Colorado and told us he's hunting with seven of these things. Dang. And he's got no timers. And he calls me up and he's like, dude, uh, I got an update for you. Okay, okay, what's going on, man? These things are loud, he says. They're loud. I'm like, dude, <laughs> you can't stop there, right? You like, like, loud good, loud bad? Like, talk to me. What's going on? He's like, well, we shot an 11-man limit in two hours, so I think it's loud good. And he immediately sent me a picture of 76 ducks and a goose Jeez. for his 11-man charter that morning. Yeah. Oh, wow. When dude. I walked up to the booth, uh, I met you this morning. Obviously, Matt was telling me about the product and uh, – you know, y'all flipped it on for me. That's the first thing I noticed. I mean, obviously the motion, but the sound was extremely realistic. I was like, this could be pretty pretty good in the field. I like I liked the phrase could be, but I'm going to take it a step further and say will be. Right. I'm going to step out and say in five years' time, y'all are going to remember the day that you met us. You're going to be like, I know those dudes. I yeah, met, let me, I let me those say dudes. this too, man. And, I've you know, we go around, we do these shows. We meet a lot of people, um, you know, in our industry and in the outdoor industry. Doing trophy hunters, we, we see waterfowl every now and again. Um, but it's, it's rare to see somebody as passionate and driven behind their product and as confident as you guys are in a product. You know, it, it seems like more and more these days, you know, someone's always trying to sell you something. Someone's it, always just trying to get their nut, you know, and they're like, this is why you need this, you know. It's in, yeah, just, like, it's it's in, it's in the there, reviews. Yeah. They're it's just it, out there trying to make a buck. Yeah, yeah. It's, and, it's in the reviews, Matt. But it, it's, it's refreshing to have you guys here, man, and, and see the confidence you have, uh, how – far your products come from i mean if you guys are watching on youtube.com slash bayou dragons you can see this product as it sits on the table is not chopsticks and darts people this is good looking <laughs> shit right here boys you know so we that took that's, a lot of time to do it this is professional man you you guys have put your heart and soul behind this product and it, it's really refreshing just to have you guys on here man and, and well, i appreciate see that. you guys out here doing your thing man grinding and hustling for it well i, I would argue that this is it, this is probably the most important tool that a waterfowler can have in their bin um, in, in their blind bag. Um, and I don't say that lightly. You know, when we first met, and I haven't told you this yet, I guarantee you we're the only waterfowl company in the industry that has a kill more birds guarantee. If you don't up your bird count with our product, you can send it back to me for a full refund. 
And I've had that guarantee since I launched this company last October. So this has only been out for one season. 2,500 units we sold and zero returns. Straight five-star reviews. The reason we hold this guarantee is because this is actually working. We accidentally stumbled upon the next big thing in waterfowl. When we started to find out that there was something to this sound was when folks were calling us and they're going, George, we're shooting birds in pea soup fog. And I'm like, isn't that a little unsafe? Yeah. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like, what's behind your target, buddy? Um, no, they said they're landing with the decoy. Yeah. They're landing with the decoy in pea soup fog, high corn. They're landing with the decoy, tall grass. They can't even see the decoy, and they're landing with the decoy. Why? Why are these birds sucking straight down and doing it dirty when they can't see the decoy? It has to be the sound. And I would argue that, that natural sounds in waterfowl hunting has been missing for the last 50 years. Oh, yeah. We, we Absolutely. use natural sounds in every other type of hunting. We got antlers when, we, when, when bucks are trying to, you know, uh, when bucks are fighting, we're trying to get that big old buck to come in. We're using these fake antlers we got down at Bass Pro Shop, right? Natural sounds. Turkey hunters are using rakes, scratch the ground, make it sound like the birds feeding natural sounds. You got old boy up in the tree throwing rocks out of a bucket, make it sound like nuts are falling so mm -hmm. the deer come in. Natural sounds. Waterfowl hunting, motion, decoys, vocal calls. Why? Why aren't we introducing natural water sounds into waterfowl hunting? And why haven't we done that? Now, I would argue there's... An ultra low frequency sound. I've done a little bit of studying on the water sound, trying to figure out why these birds are coming in. There's an ultra low frequency that water splashing puts out. And we've all been out there picking up your decoys and the dang bird laying right next to you. Yep. Why? I've been hiding in the dang bushes for 10 hours <laughs> and this bird wants to come and land right next to me when I'm picking up my decoys. Why? I argue these birds got a pea-sized brain. And everybody likes to say, oh, they're smart birds, they're seasoned birds, but these birds are very simple creatures. They're naturalistic and they're instinctive. My argument is that they're so in tuned with hearing and feeling this ultra low frequency water splashing sound that when they hear it and feel it, they forget everything else because they know one thing. You will never hear the sound of wings splashing in the water in a hunter's spread unless that bird is dying. No birds are just hanging out in a hunter spread, right? Right. My product introduces the idea of bringing happy fighting, feeding, mating, natural water sounds into your spread so powerful that a lot of my customers' reviews are telling me we don't even finish call. We get them within 100 yards and we shut up and let these animators do the rest. That's exciting. So I do want to talk about the animators and the mojos. So... You know, you got different brands of mojos out there. How yep. easy is it to put it on the mojo? Is it user friendly? You know, let's go into that a little bit. So I, I describe this thing just like a mallard call. Anybody can go in and buy a mallard call and your buddy's still going to blow it like a kazoo until he learns how to use it. Right? Right. You learn how to use this thing. It's got an Amidia magnet clip, clips onto your bird exactly the same way your wing clips onto your bird. Your wing goes into the animator, super simple with a little set screw. If you want to use the wings, by the way. You can run them wingless. You can run them wingless. And a lot, of, a lot of guys are doing that. When the birds get a little sensitive to the flash, they just walk out, pop the wings off. In fact, I don't know. I haven't told you guys this, but this product used to be called the Cheater. <laughs> That's a cool name, huh? Yeah. Yeah. My, yes. my wife was not a fan of that name. So you, for but, you listeners out there, you're not pulling mojos anymore. Remember that. You're pulling wings. Right. Let the animator do the work. Right. You leave your mojo out there. And in California, we can't hunt with our, deco our spinning wing decoys up until December 1st. Really? Yeah. Wait, nope. So they sit in our garage for half the season, and then we pull them out and use them for two months and put them back away. So I made this product initially so I can use my ducks early. I'll be Wingless. Done. Totally legal, by the way. As, lo as far as California DFG goes, DFW now, I guess there's no more game. It's wildlife. Yeah. Totally, totally allowed. So to answer your question, I mean, you got the camshaft, you got the rod, you got the plate. You put the rod into the camshaft, you put the plate on the rod, you put the camshaft on your bird. If you're familiar with my product, you can have it up and running in as little as 60 seconds. If you're not familiar with it, I always tell folks, you know, just like we tell everybody else, you, you buy your first mallard call, what do you do? Practice. Put Practice. it in your yeah. truck, drive around with it, and blow it when no one can hear you, right? And mm -hmm. learn how to use it. Take my product, take it out to a local pond or a puddle 
or just put it on in your living room and just figure out how it works because the last thing you want to be doing is trying to set this thing up at four in the morning in the dark for your very first time. Now, yeah. be advised, the rods float. They're hollow carbon fiber. The plate floats. It's polypropylene. Camshaft sinks like a rock, so don't, you don't know, drop that don't drop the camshaft. But if you do, we have replacement parts. But um, it's simple to use. It's supposed to be simple to use. Rocky, you were new to it. Yeah. I mean, tell us, tell us how it was for you figuring out how to use it and learning how to use it. So, like George said, utilize the off time to play with it. I didn't. First time I was using it. <laughs> I did the exact opposite. Yeah, I did the exact opposite of what George was describing. So, uh, you know, to your point, Mitchell, user-friendly. It's very user-friendly, even if you don't want to take the time to learn the product in the off-season. Uh, I took care of everything on the bank first, putting it together, trying to, you know, learn it. I didn't want to be in the water, you know, putting the mojo pole in the ground, putting the duck on top of the pole, you know, putting one wing on one side and then figuring out how to attach the camshaft to the body, then the wing to the camshaft, and then yada, yada, yada. So I took care of it all on the ground. So in doing so, we have, um, George is talking about the sound plate. We also have a silent plate. And yeah, yeah. being a new user, um, quote, unquote, part of the prototype team, first season, uh, this, this, the silent plate, I actually ran it upside down. Because in my, my intuition was thinking this is the way it's got to go. Right, because it's cup. Yeah, because so, so I had the cup facing up. The, the, the right way to use it is cup down, but it's just like a tool. Anytime we have new products in our, in our arsenal, we've got to learn how to use them. Yeah, try to figure it out. You right, know. right. I think it was, so the thought process there was that if you yeah. put it, you know, with that, that cup facing down, you're going to push and move more yeah, water. Push, push yeah, push and move right, more water. Right. You know the 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 con the concave up, uh, so that's the way I thought it went. <coughs> so hunted with it, you know, was having great success with it. Uh, called up George because I was having uh, some mechanical issues with the product. George's customer service is hands down probably the best. So uh, who do you you when you call right? So number on the thing. I'm, I'm I got this thing and I'm like eh, I don't know I'm, I don't, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I pick up the phone and call. Who do I get? Yeah, you get me. Direct yeah. line to Mr. George? You yeah. get me for now. Okay. You know, um, I take my product and my company super seriously. It's, a, it's important to me to make sure people feel rewarded and respected. I think the best customer service in the, in the country as far as return policies go is Costco. Right? I remember buying a, a remote control <laughs> plane from Costco when I was younger. I crashed it right into the ground, snapped it in half, and took it back <laughs> in pieces. Yeah. And they took it back. And to me, it was, you know, people are going to take advantage of, of me and my company because of this. And I understand that. But for those two assholes out there, screw you first off. But second, there's a million other people that honestly might have an issue with this that I don't want to sit there and pry and ask you, well, did you do this? Well, because you did that, it's not covered. No, nah, dude. You broke it? I don't care if you sat on it, stepped on it, ran it over with your truck. We have a limited lifetime warranty on my product. If you break anything... The only thing I require you to do is ship it back to me. I want, a, I want proof that it's broken because if you lost it, <laughs> yeah. you're not going to be able to send right. it back to me. And I'm not shipping out free parts to everybody in the world for no reason. But if you legitimately have an issue with our product, ship it back to me. You're going to get a usable, brand-new product in your hand within a reasonable time frame. I'd say less than a week. And that, that number comes to me because I want to make sure that I can get that problem solved as soon as possible and as quickly as possible. And if anybody ever takes the place of answering those phone calls, they're going to be just as damn good as I am at taking care of my customers. Because more importantly than anything is customers first, waterfowl second. We all want to shoot ducks, but we, you know, it takes people to do that. And if people aren't happy with their waterfowl products, I think everybody out here, and I'm not trying to dog on any spinning wing decoy company in the world, these ducks have electrical parts. They're sitting over water. They're in water. People drop them in water. Everybody likes to complain about how their lucky duck, their avian, their mojo, whatever, is broke it after one year. I'm like, dude, we hunt. Right. Yeah. yeah, we're hard on our equipment, dude. We're right. out there bouncing it around in the bottom of the boat, and then we're throwing it out. You know, your buddy that's brand new probably threw it out, thinking it was a floater or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, um, yeah that's think Porter. Everybody who watches this uh, this podcast, uh, <laughs> Porter owes me a, a few decoys. 
It's just <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at that. He'll know. He you knows. Know, it, he knows. About. There's but, there's always problems with these decoys, and there's going to be problems with mine. And the last thing I want is for someone to buy my product, think that they might have a problem, and be screwed. Yeah. So that's why I answered So I want to come back to this exchange that you had. So, Rocky, you're out in the field, and you're thinking to yourself, man, am I just not doing this right? What the hell am I doing? So you, you called George. Yeah, so I called George. Uh, I was like, uh, and, and it had nothing to do with, with the cup itself, and that's, what, that's the topic we're on. So I was running the cup upside down, and George was like, wait a minute. Did you just say you're running the concave up? I was like, yeah. I said, I, I just, I just how I thought it went. He goes, bro, you're supposed to have that down. I was like, well, I've been running it up, and I've been having great success. He goes, I don't know how many numbers he had put out at this particular time. <laughs> I want to, you know, probably well over 1,000 units out in the field. Maybe less than that. I don't know. It's just a guess. He goes, you're the first person that I've heard that's been running that concave up. He said, that is incredible. And, and if, you, if you turn it upside down, you get a different, you get a different aspect of the animator. And, and it just it opens up different doors, different sounds, different results. Birds respond to it differently. And, and, and you know, it's a tool. This product is a tool. You got to figure out when to use it, when not to use it. Right. You know, and I mean, we could sit here and talk ad nauseum about how to use it, when to use it, when not to use it. But I think that's part of the allure of the product. You know, you got you to figure that out for yourself. Yeah. And uh, I, there's something else about this product completely um, that I just appreciate right off the rip, having never used it, never brought it out in the field with me one time. But uh, M- Mitchell and I uh, really, really appreciate the setup that you've got set on the table right now because we know how hard it is to keep your shit dry and to keep your shit clean <laughs> right. when you hunt in the conditions right. that we do getting out in the marsh. I mean, more often than not, the air is like hot soup in southeast <laughs> oh, Texas. Yeah. So regardless <laughs> of whether or not me that. regardless of whether or not you drop your shit in the water, it's still going to get wet, right? right? And you guys have a, a, a sweet setup of it's it doesn't take up space hardly. It weighs next to nothing, and it's got its own dry case that you can get you know, additionally with the product. Hey, Matt. Yeah. It weighs that, two that and a half ounces. By the way. And yeah, it and it floats. floats man. And yeah. you know, the whole reason we have this case right here is because of Rocky. There's a reason Rocky's here, yeah. uh, everybody. It's not just because he happened to be in the room at the time. Um, Rocky has taken a step into not uh, just going above and beyond being a prototype tester. We had um, original um, cases that were zippers. So if you got the zippers out in the mud, um, you know, he, he sent me a picture yeah. of his case and it had a knife cut straight across the front. And I'm going, dude, why don't you just put a little oil on it? He's like, I had to use my animator. Dude. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> I had to get this thing out the box, you know, but that was a big eye opener for me yeah. because my hunters in the field are telling me what they need. And dude, I'm going to be honest with you. This cost me a lot of money to design and I am not rich by no means, dude. I mean, we rent a small condo in California. I've got two kids. We struggle day to day just like everybody else. And putting the money into creating this case for our customers, uh, it it put us out quite a bit. Um, But I felt like it was required. It was almost necessary because there was a real problem in the field. We identified the problem. We come up with the solution. And that's what we're always going to do is try to listen to uh, folks just like Rocky. Yeah, so let's let's continue talking about the – so to the box, like you were saying, man – something that you took the time to uh, develop, you know, based off of the problems and stuff that you were seeing in the field. And I think that's important, man, because, you know, there's, there's something to be said about, you know, not everything in waterfowl needs to change, but it, you, you've got to evolve as the, the sport and, you know, the industry is evolving, you know, so it's important to take and say like, all right, you know, you can't just be good with good enough. Right. I mean, the, the entirety of making progress, the whole, system of making progress is to get started to try to to try something new and um you know that's i think how we stumbled upon the first water call i mean rocky was talking about turning the plate upside down and all this other stuff i had never really thought of this as a water calling device um you know the plate started as that simple concave plate it made a pitter patter sound and i didn't think much about the sound because we were trying to make ripples well I wanted it to spray more water, so I put in these little grooves. I don't know if I have one in here. Um, but the grooves on the side throw water out. But what ended up happening when I sent it off to my manufacturer is they go, hey, we got to make some, some ridges in here. we got to put some ridges so that way it won't collapse on itself. What ended up happening was the magic of wings on the water. That sound c- 
comes from those 14 air chambers, seven spit spots. And we realize if you even lift that plate up and down just a quarter inch, you get a completely different sound. So now if I'm hunting widgeon or pintail, <clears throat> I got that plate just, just touching the water surface, and it's just got this tick, 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 you know. If I'm hunting canvas back, because that's what we hunt a lot out in California, and, uh, you know, God forbid he ever give me a green head, um, you want that, <laughs> you want that big, deep, rich sound. You get that plate just a quarter inch under the surface, and it duh, 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 like a big old mallard patting in the water. And then this dude over here turns a silent plate upside down. You get this little pitter patter, and we hunt our wood duck and our teal with that. And then you turn it upside down, uh, the silent plate properly, and you get just clear sound. You know, there's no sound at all, just splash, which is super cool because everybody's got that buddy who's like, hey, I'll pay for your shells, I'll pay for your gas, take me hunting, okay. And you get him out there, and he's like, hey, turn off that racket. It's like, all right, well, I ain't losing the water motion, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's where the silent plate was kind of for was those folks who really complain about the sound because they haven't taken the time to actually learn how powerful the sound can be. So I would argue, um, just in conclusion of the introduction to the world of this device, when I started and said this is going to be a very big deal, in five years time, I'm telling you right now, this water sound, natural sound introduction into waterfowl hunting is not going anywhere. This is going to be by far the newest, most powerful tool that you put in your box. And I'm not just blowing smoke. I absolutely 100% guarantee if you don't up your bird count, now whether or not you hit them, <laughs> yeah, that's another Whether thing. or not you hit them, that's up to you. But if you can honestly tell me, hey man, I used this and I did not see any changes, I didn't see any results at all, send it back to me for a full refund. I stand by that because I'm so confident that this water sound is going to be so huge in waterfowl hunting that every, every single hunter needs to have this in their bag. Every single hunter needs to have The product is going to speak for itself is Absolutely, what you're saying. Absolutely, Mitchell. Absolutely. Well, uh, you've made it super easy. I mean, there, there's no reason not to have it. Like I said, it doesn't take up hardly any space. It's super light. It's easy to have in the bag. And Weighs two and a half ounces. I'll say this, man, <laughs> as, opposed, as opposed to the other devices that you'll have in your bag to, to make water motion, and you're not going to get the same sound either. You're not getting that sound with anything else. But just for the motion, if you want to have that big jerk rig in your bag or you want the one that, you know, sometimes it's, it doesn't take up as much space to just have the, the jerk string, but a lot of these jerk rigs now, you know, you, they're collapsible, but still you got all these pipes that you got to stick together and then you got to put a decoy on each end of it and you got to run your line all the way back. And then if you're hunting clear water, then you got a line that's run through the water and, you yeah, know, through the air, is. you can see a straight line from your decoys back to your blind where you're tugging Talk to on old it, boy you know? about his jerk rig experience. So, yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's that, it's that huge setup or it's this small setup that's going to give you motion and sound. Right. And you could do five of those in your, in your bag and it takes up the same amount of space as doing one big jerk rig. Right, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, it's cool you brought up that, Matt, from North Dakota all the way back to home, uh, home in Arkansas. Uh, I wanted to run the entire season without a jerk rig. I want to put this animator to the test. I want to see what non kind of numbers we can produce. Uh, so out of state, pretty successful season. Uh, West Arkansas, we're not really known for uh, a lot of birds got to have spillover from eastern Oklahoma, central to eastern Arkansas. Uh, and last year, we had exactly that. Western Arkansas, running without a jerk rig, my numbers were over 300 birds. And, and, and then it, it, anybody that's in West Arkansas, you're sitting at home right now listening to this, you can certainly testify that West Arkansas, 300, 300 bird count, is a phenomenal season on the west side of the state, outside of travel. Right. You know, I did travel. Numbers are up, you know, so I mean, but I ran the entire season without a jerk rig for a couple of reasons. The number one reason I wanted to put the animator to the test. What are these birds going to do? The number two reason was um, I, my dog the season before got in the jerk rig twice. Dangerous situation. Uh, I'm coming out of my lanyard, making sure I don't have my calls on, throwing my cell phone out of my waders, and I'm going to get my dog. Mm -hmm. didn't ha fortunately, I didn't have to do that. But I, I removed the danger for the dog with the jerk rig and put the animator to the test and had a very successful season from North Dakota all the way back to Arkansas. So you're the, you're the living proof right here. <clears throat> Absolutely. Okay. I mean, listen, the jerk rig's not going anywhere. It, it, it just, it's just not. There, there's going to be hunters that will absolutely say, I will not get rid of my jerk rig. And that's more power to you. That's an important you point, know, if yeah. I could touch on that real quick, yeah. man. This product is not designed to, to, to remove the pulsator or to remove these motion decoys or the wonder ducks or whatever, yeah. blah, blah, blah. This, this is something for the guy who wants to have 
something in his backpack that can change your hunt on a day that you get stuck on a bluebird day. I named my company Bluebird Waterfowl because we have a variety of products coming out over the next five years that are going to change the way people hunt in still water. And we shouldn't have to fill up our our bags with these heavy, super heavy decoys that we might not even use if it's blowing 15 and the birds are flying and we're hunting. Dude, I ain't putting that out. It's not worth my time to go get out of my blind, mess up my mess up my spread, and, and go try to change what's already working, right? right. Now, you want to carry around a five-pound bird with a lithium battery in it with cords and, and plugs and stuff everywhere to go set it up and probably get stuck full of grass? Or do you want to carry around a two-and-a-half-ounce product that's the size of about a couple of pencils and you can have one of the most powerful tools in the industry in your backpack that's usable when you need it. I do like the idea you talked about you can run them without the wings because a lot of times late in the season we don't run mojos. They'll flare birds occasionally, you know. So you can run them without wings, correct? You can run them without wings. And, and on that note, uh, I've got some okay. prototype testers down in southeast Texas, and those guys don't hunt spinning wings at all. They don't even bring them out. Um, they just, they're flyway. They say these birds are beat up. The, yep. the serious prototype testers that I chose, the guides that I chose to test my product do not use them. And I told them, hey, I'm going to send you this, and I want you to hunt them straight up for four weeks. Hunt them every hunt. And those same dudes call me back, and they go, George, the spinning wing is back. And I think it's for a lot of reasons. The flash is going to bring those birds in from a long distance. Yep. But once they get down and it's sheet glass, there's no surface tension being broken. Those birds are out. They know this is not a real bird. So what our product does, it comes down with the flash, you get that surface tension broken, they come in a little soon, a little closer, and then once they get that splash sound in their ears, their feet down and do it dirty. And they're saying that they're seeing the exact same results as when the spinning wing decoy came out. The birds are fluttering over the top of them. They're trying to land with the decoy. They're, the birds are so confident that they've found a real bird that these guys down in southeast Texas are not having any problems hunting with their spinning wing decoys all over again. You're yeah. about to have some more guys down in southeast Texas that are hunting over them. <laughs> yeah, hey, Mitchell, to your point, you know, you're talking about the, the flash flaring the birds. I, I, I can't argue that. However... Um, a buddy of mine that I hunt extensively with, we found that birds were finishing with the flash on late season um, and the animator running. But there again, it's a tool. Right. If the birds yeah. are flaring, you, we got to change something. Yeah. That, they don't change it on the first volley. You know, two, three, four volleys go by, something, you, something's got to change. Run out there, pull your wings, and, and, and that may flip the switch. But, but we noticed that... We weren't. We were pulling wings less often. Put it that way. That's exciting. It's exciting to hear because you know we do use mojo. We hunt in Southeast Texas. Yeah. We we've hunted mojos for years. Definitely early season. Maybe I just got some grumpy old hunters. Well, some <laughs> people are, some people got, like them. Some people creature, don't. You got, creatures of habit. You got guys that are hunting in the South. Is what you got <laughs> okay. because we got dude, like you said these birds and I, I'll, I'll argue this to anybody, man. How many miles and miles have these birds traveled? from up north to come make it down to where we're at and yeah. how many hunters have they seen along the way they've been getting banged up all the way through the the entire united states coming down to us oh yeah. dude so when they get here this is this is last stop before they head to mexico you and, know and think and about drink it. margaritas on the beach <laughs> how many times have you had them birds come down from four or five hundred yards they come right outside your spread and they stay right outside a shoot range and then they take back off yeah mm -hmm. they, they get they get real wary down they're down scared right Texas. right yeah, but dude they got a small brain yeah they got a small brain and they're instinctive and see, what I argue is happening is those birds are coming down. They're getting close enough to your spread to listen and feel for that ultra-low frequency water splashing sound. And if they don't see that, they could see decoys. They could see motion. You could be the best caller in the world. But if they don't feel and hear that ultra-low frequency water splashing sound, those birds are out. And I'm telling you right now, the reason we have our guarantee you're going to up your bird count is because I bet, you're gonna without a doubt, birds. Those seasoned birds are going to come down. They're going to make that half circle. They're going to feel and hear that ultra-low frequency splashing, and they're going to suck down in. I ain't going to sit here and tell you that every single bird you see in the sky is going to suck in like a vacuum. That's just not fair to me. Right. Yep. Birds are going to be birds. But I will tell you that when you are having trouble finishing your birds, especially, you know, I'll be honest, guys. Like, I've been hunting ducks for, like, 12 years, 14 years, and I haven't had a lot of time calling most of the guys i go hunting with call right i just haven't had that much practice i I'll, I'll get the birds down but when they get close i might hit them with a low chuckle or you know something real quiet trying to keep my call down because 
I don't want to spook them with how bad I am at calling. I got you. And what yeah. we're hearing from a lot of guys just like me is by the time the birds get down, they don't even touch their call. They let this wings on the water sound suck in those birds, and it's game over. So are you going to finish every single bird that you see in the sky? Absolutely not. But if the birds are going to finish, I promise you they're going to finish right next to one of these animators. Well, that's new. It's exciting, man, and we're definitely uh – I'm pumped to try it out, man. I, I really am, and you know, I'm you guys, excited for you guys. I can't wait. I'm telling you right now, you know, if, if we have the success with the animator that you guys, that I'm confident we are going to have, man, you're going to see, uh, you're going to see this a lot. Uh, Bayou Dragons are going to be running quite a bit, man. <laughs> you'll you'll sure. have, we'll, we'll see about getting that our stamp of approval on this thing, man. We're definitely going <laughs> to battle test it. It um, has its place, man. It has its place. So, you're not going to use it every hunt. But. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to start wrapping up here, guys. We we all got to get set up and get ready for this uh, this Sunday at the Trophy Hunter Show. Um, yep. Tell us real quick, man. We want to check you guys out online. We want to uh, find your website, find out how to you know look and see about your product, maybe order one. How do we do that? Bluebirdwaterfowl.com. Or you could just Google the animator, you know, uh, Google Bluebird Waterfowl. We're on Bluebird Waterfowl, Instagram, TikTok. Um, Facebook. You know, Facebook. Yeah, I mean, it's just Bluebird Waterfowl, man. We're a Bluebird Waterfowl family. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of exciting stuff coming out. And the best thing you can do is just, if, if you're not going to try our product, just follow our Instagram. Smash that like button. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we're going to be posting reviews. And if you want to check out some real stories from real hunters, you'll hear it on our reviews. A lot of folks are like, yeah, you know, I didn't really notice a difference, but the birds that did land landed right next to it. So I guess that, you know, you're going to see honest reviews. I don't hide reviews. Right. All my reviews are five stars because all my reviews are five stars. You get in there and read what those boys have to say, you're going to read some honest stories. Birds are going to be birds, you know. I feel like this definitely helped a little, but it didn't help awesome. You're going to see other guys like, I, I'll never hunt another day without it. You'll see guys that are like, this is a game changer. It's going to change everything forever. I can't believe I shot so many birds. You're going to see the whole gamut of guys being completely humble and honest about their hunting experience with it to guys that are just uh, so excited about it, they might as well work for me. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to see everything in between because every review that comes into our web website is, is a real hunter hunting real birds with our animator um so yeah bluebirdwaterfowl.com is the place to go and purchase it if you bundle it i think if you get a couple animators in a case you can get a good deal yeah and maybe we'll work out a buyu coupon code hey, or something yeah, yeah. Just go <laughs> buy dragons at checkout. <laughs> yeah well hey man we're, we're super excited for you guys i mean uh, you guys got a great thing going y'all got a good team here man you guys work really well together um I'm excited to see what the future holds for Bluebird Waterfowl and, and everything else and see you guys grow and continue down this path, you know. It's not everybody that gets to do what they love, you know. So uh, we're definitely all fortunate in that regard to be able to have these things that, you know, we can go and do these shows and, and enjoy ourselves and, and get to do what we love, man. So we're super happy that you guys sat down with us this morning, man. Uh, and we're excited to see where this thing goes, man. Why don't we just, why don't we just jump off the cuff and, and make a – a buy you coupon code for free we shipping. We should. We're gonna do. We're gonna do free shipping. If you stayed with us all the way through and listened to my nonsense this entire time, because I know I talk more than a five year old. Uh, buy you. Let's do buy you. Gonna get you free shipping on our website. All right. You heard it here first, folks. Use code buy you at checkout when you buy the animator to get free shipping. Buyyoudragons.com/slash YouTube. Thanks, guys, for uh, sticking around with us, and we'll catch you on the next one. <laughs>